Limpopo Health MEC Dr. Popi Ramatuba is criticizing African leaders who go abroad to seek health care. Speaking at a three-day health in Daba, she challenged leaders to rather fix the continent's health care system instead of traveling abroad whenever they or perhaps even their family members need medical attention. The MEC has been outspoken on this issue and the issue of people receiving health care in their own countries and highlighting that as the preferable option. She joins us this morning. A very good morning to you, Dr. Ramatuba. Good to have you with us. The issue of South Af or African presidents and African senior politicians going outside of their own countries to seek medical help is nothing new. Why is it that you felt so passionately about it that you declared this in front of all of the leaders who were there at the Indaba? Morning and, and morning to, to all your viewers. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting us. What we, one was indicating, we must appreciate the fact that we are at an African health in Dab and the agenda and, and the theme was uh, African health leaders have, have really gathered at Kalaga State from different countries across the continent delegates, including administrators, health workers, and all those, mainly the policy formulators, to say, let's look into the future of healthcare in Africa, looking at the Agenda 2063. So it is important uh, for us to be honest with each other, to say we do not have confidence in ourselves as a continent. We are not taking ourselves serious as, con as leaders of this continent. And we continuously would expect others to take us serious. If we look at the universal health care coverage that the, the continent, including the United Nations, has declared that every country must make sure that we, we move towards implementing a, a that. And, and you will know as South Africans, we've looked at the national health insurance as one of uh, the, the methodology, the funding model that will lead us into the universal health coverage. So one had to raise this to say, let it start with us in the leadership. And, and let's be honest with each other. In my entire life as a medical student or as a healthcare professional working, before I was even a politician, I have never read or heard of any leader in another continent except Africa seeking health care in another continent. Leaders within their own uh, continents, they would assist each other in building their own health system and they, they depend and they believe in their own continent. So it's high time that as African leaders, we should stay away from lip service and focus on building our own health system so that which we will be proud of because it doesn't assist that a leader can be safe when they are sick because they've got options of being flown overseas whereas our citizens that we must look after are struggling in accessing health care in our different countries within our continent mc you speak about lip service and that there needs to come a time where this stops but in all truth and fairness, this has not been the first time that this issue has been brought up. I mean, we've had the likes of uh, Buhari, Nigeria's Buhari. Um, he spent about 170 days, I believe, between 2015 and 2019 in London for medical health reasons. We've got Zimbabwe's Mugabe. We've got Benin's Patrice Talon. We've got even here in South Africa, you know, political leaders and presidents who've gone out of the country uh, to get the, the, the medical service. And in some instances, we've actually had politicians even dying, uh, whether it's in you know, Asia or, or Europe or, or the United States. Why is there not a political will to invest in the health care of uh, the, the, the continent, even though it was agreed in 2001 um, at the Abuja Declaration that was signed by all African leaders that 15 percent of the GDP ought to be reinvested into the health care sector? But we see that that is actually not even happening. I think you have also at the same time answered yourself uh, why uh, things are not changing. Um, and you are quite right. If I remember well, 2014, Minister Mtualiri raised this matter sharply. Uh, 2015, again, he repeated it. If I remember very well, he was in Victoria Falls, where he 
ministers of health were gathered. And, and he raised this. Not so long ago, we had an, an Uncompositiro memorial lecture where he was also addressing, I, I've got his speech I can send to you. He has raised this matter. That doesn't mean that we need to stop uh, raising this issue. And, and, and the, the, the reality of the matter is that health becomes personal and becomes sensitive. And, and when it affects you personally, that's when you would understand. So those of us who are at the helm of looking after the lives of our people, for instance, uh, my ANC government has deployed me to lead health in Limpopo. That means that every single citizen who's sick in Limpopo, it, I, I have got to deal with that problem. So that is why you would understand where am I coming from. When I see people dying, not because doctors cannot make intervention, but because of the challenges of lack of resources, doctors are not able to make intervention. So hence, we are saying African leaders should start within their own legislations. You know, somebody yesterday, last night, sent me an article of in another country where member of parliament were raising this thing, demanding uh, that it cannot only be the president that goes overseas, even all of us as members of parliament and our families, and the country must pass that legislation. And, and I'm listening to you, journalists. None of you is picking that up and raise this sharply. But let uh, uh, Dr. Ramatuba raise this. It, you, you, you get in and, and be critical. I also ask myself, where is our loyalty as the media? Do we really love the people of this continent? Because what we should be doing is to hold us accountable. If in a country the parliament can meet and say, we are going to pass this legislation, it is uncalled for. We have got to look into this matter very seriously uh, currently. And if our continent leaders mean business about fixing the health, about making sure we achieve the universal health care coverage in our lifetime, we need to start by ourselves and say we are not going to be flown outside the the continent. We can uh, consult each other so, so let me ask the you, continent. So, so let me ask you this, um, MEC Poppy, and just for clarity, are you saying that you are in support of leaders not flying out of the country for medical reasons, you are in support of that being legislated. Is, is that what you are saying? I, I, I couldn't get you, you into I'm saying I'm not in support of any leader within the continent leaving their continent and their countries when they are sick, being flown overseas to access health care. Then so, so, would you, so would you then propose the legislation that says taxpayers' money uh, should not be used for services such as that? Is that something that you would propose and even support? That is what I'm saying, to say, look, it can never be at the expense of the taxpayers. The taxpayers' must, money must be able to be used to fix the health system in our country, which is what we are saying, even if you look at the principle of NHI. You, you know, if I fl I'm flown at the expense of the state to any continent for healthcare services, the poor woman is subsidizing that because if the poor woman also contribute towards that. So what we are saying is that it cannot be the poor subsidizing the rich. It must be the other way around. So even within the country, hence you hear us being very vocal about the uh, national health insurance. We are also saying this thing of the poor subsidizing the rich must stop uh, everywhere. So I'm not support of any leader who at the expense of the taxpayers will leave their continent. But equally, even those leaders that says, I've got money, the salary that I have, it's paid through your taxes. So as long as I'm a public servant, and my public profile, it is the taxpayer's money that I will be using because I don't have any other source of income unless I've got other source of income as a business person. But if you are a public representative, you are dependent on the taxpayers, seek health 
within our continent, within our country. The principle here is about the future of healthcare in Africa can only be achieved if we can start believing in ourselves as Africans. Let me give you the painful example that yesterday I saw. Within the delegates, thousands of those delegates are all coming from the continent, which is very good. The speakers and ministers are from across the continent, which is brilliant and good. But when you go to the other side, where there's exhibition, where with radiology equipment, whether it's laboratory investigation equipment that are the latest model, everything that was there, whether it's pharmaceutical companies, anyone who was displaying during that at that time, none of those companies comes from the continent. This is very painful. For example, the budget of health in this country, uh, which goes to Minister Dr. Joe Parker and all his nine MECs, including myself, it's around 244 billion plus. That budget, where does it go? We're saying the country doesn't have money. Where do I buy my MRI scan? I've seen all those companies that were there. Where do I buy my CT scans? And, and until when am I going to buy this equipment from Kenya, will buy from Zambia? We will never do that as long as we don't trust ourselves we trust over, over, overseas country. Where did we get our mask when we were fighting COVID? Where did we get uh, our gloves when we were fighting COVID? All we are saying from for some of us is to say, Africans, if we are serious about the 2063 agenda, which is what we were discussing about yesterday, we've got to start now by ourselves trusting our own system in our own continent, like all other leaders in all other continents. You know, one thing, never come to Africa. One thing, um, Dr. Poppy, that you are highlighting here is pretty much what takes me back to uh, the Abuja Declaration. The commitment was 15% of GDP to, to health. We're not seeing that. Even us in South Africa, we're sitting at about 8.5 or, or so. Um, Nigeria in 2018 was sitting at half of that, about 4%. Is that not perhaps even one of the first commitments that as leaders within the health care system on the African continent can say we identified 15 percent as the average contribution? Let's at least start there so that we can start addressing all of the issues that you have highlighted there, Dr. Poppy. That's where we must start. You're quite right. But I, like I said, you've answered yourself. How do you uh, get first? Because I said earlier on health is for personal. As long as you still have options, when you and your family, personal, close family members are sick, as long as you have other options in other continents, it's not going to be easy for you to implement. But when you do not have an option, and your option is yourself as leaders of this continent, that is when you are going to be forced to implement. So this is what we are saying. Let's debate. It's, it's a necessary irritation. Uh, we understand that some of us might not be comfortable with this particular topic, but we have to discuss it to say, if we stop uh, the, the, the access in other continents uh, of our leaders, including myself, then you will see us implementing the Abuja Declaration because we will be personally affected. Dr. Rama, uh, Ramatuba, thank you so much uh, for your time uh, this morning.